In this video, I thought it'd be worthwhile to talk about replacing rubber belts and VCRs, tape recorders, or anything you happen to have that requires a rubber belt. I first started working in a television repair shop about 30 years ago, and some of the things that we repaired besides TVs were VCRs and tape recorders. I remember my boss would have me changing hundreds of belts on different tape recorders, and it used to really drive me nuts because some of them were a real challenge to get out of the units. But I saved a lot of those belts over the years, and some of these belts probably go back, oh, maybe 25 years or more. So here I'm looking them over now. I'm noticing a lot of them are still good, where some of them have turned to like a, a rubber tar. It's getting all over my hands, in fact. And it uh, says a lot about the manufacturing process behind the belts. The other thing I noticed is some of the belts and or idler tires like this would start cracking after only a few years, where others were still good maybe 20 years later. Run a little sandpaper on the outside and you were good to go. Well, a lot of times when I needed a, a series of belts, I could often call up a company that sold the belts in what they call uh, belt kits, where you'd get all the belts for a particular VCR. You wouldn't have to try to measure what belt you needed. And it was real convenient to be able to order them in that manner. In fact, this company here, it looks like they're still in business. I used to be able to get belts through them. And one of the challenges was trying to figure out how to measure the belt so I'd end up with the right belt for a particular application. And in their catalog, they usually had three specifications, the inside circumference, the CS, which I guess was the uh, the height in terms of the, the, the thickness of the belt. In fact, I wrote it down here. We First, we got the inside circumference here. We had the vertical height, or the cross section going vertically like this. And we had the wall, which is measuring the belt thickness on a horizontal plane like this. They refer to that as the wall. Anyway, those are the three specifications I could usually use to uh, get a particular belt from this company here. And uh, glad to see they're still in business. Well, anyways, I thought I'd show one of the belt gauges you can use if you have to measure. This is something that they used to send out to people that ordered from them. And this basically allows you to measure all three specifications with the gauges they have on this thing here. Now the first one is the uh, inside circumference of the belt. And for that, I can put the belt across these two points here. I can stretch it, and I'm always careful not to stretch too much or I end up ordering a belt that's way too big. And in fact, they say when you measure the belt, they recommend deducting, I think it was five or 10%. What I did was I drew myself a little picture here many years ago just to give me a reference as to how much to pull the thing to get the right belt. Anyway, that's, uh, that's for the inside circumference. Then to measure the wall of the belt, you'd have these gauges on the end here, and this will give you the, the uh, measurements by putting the belt in whichever slot this thing happens to fit into here, and it's got a nice little gauge here you can use as a reference when you're needing a belt. Anyway, I just thought I'd make a quick video about that. Uh, some of these things are still uh, available, and um, a lot of people are still fixing VCRs and tape recorders. so. If you have such a need, hopefully you find this video helpful. As always, I hope you enjoy the video, and please subscribe, and please give it a thumbs up.